calls or do you want to call it no, there, no, no, no. We, we can discuss this later. This is from St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, a lot of people mischaracterize Imam Ghazali's argument. Imam Ghazali never used the word cause. Yeah. He said something that made it exist. Yeah? A cause is a philosophical term. So yeah. Imam Ghazali never used it. St. Thomas Aquinas, he's a Christian Catholic, uh, he's a Christian Italian priest. He used the first cause argument to prove Trinity. So this is not the first cause argument. We don't use this because we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always creates. If you're, if you're restricting Allah is only the first cause, that means what? Well, Allah at one point didn't create anything? No. So therefore, we, we reject the first course argument. This is the reason why, unfortunately, many brothers and many brothers in speakers corner are using this argument. This is wrong. What I'm using the argument of creation, the proof of creation, that you know that you didn't that you did not come by nothing, you did not create yourself, right? You did not create something that created before you. So the so the one who brought everything into existence must have always existed, and that's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Turn again to that last point. Right. So. If you didn't, if we didn't create the heavens and the earth, yeah. because we have a beginning, yeah. therefore the one who created everything must have always existed. Okay, so let's, let's yeah. just let's see, have that an axiom then. Let's say it's not an true. axiom. It, it's let's not an axiom. Thing, because obviously for me, um, no, no. Do you accept it? For the sake of argument, I accept. No, no, not for the sake of argument. Be honest. Yes or no? Say it to me one more time. I want to hear it again. Okay. Allah says, "Am khuluku min ghairi shayin amhum al khaliqun." Were they created by nothing? So yeah, nothing can be created by nothing. Good, good. Nothing can be created by nothing. Brilliant. Am hum al khaliqun. Or did you, did they create themselves? Did you create yourself? Right, good. I don't need to explain further, you know. Right? This is the reason why the, the, the question that these Christians ask is a rational question. Yeah? You can't you can't say you created yourself. Did you create yourself? Is it but Allah is, wants you to think that how absurd. How absurd you as an atheist thinking that there's no creator. So Allah says, Am khalaqu samawat wal ard. Or did they create the heavens and the earth? You, I mean, you look relatively young. I'll say safely within the age range, you're younger than 50 years old. Okay, <laughs> right. So 50 years ago, you didn't exist. Okay, so the universe still existed before you. Right. So you know that there's a beginning of the universe. Yeah. So the one who created the universe must have always existed. But la yuqinun. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, does, he, does, he doesn't even answer the question because he wants you to think. And you know the logical conclusion so needs to? Something before the universe that's always existed. Always existed. That's it. And okay, we say Allah. Why is that thing God? Okay. Uh, okay. Good, good, good. And I so, understand good. you can define good as being that thing. No, no, no. no. Good, 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 good. So now, you, so now you accept there's a creator, right? Always sure. existed. Right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a short chapter of the Quran called Surah Al-Ikhlas. It says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim, bismillahi wa rahman rahim Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one, not one in three, not multiplicity of gods. So Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one. Yeah. Why only one? Because Allah says in the Quran that had there been gods besides Allah, each of them would have fought each other. If God is all powerful, why does he need to fight for power? That's the reason why you find in Greek in Greek mythology, gods fighting each other. That doesn't show a, a perfect God, yeah? Because God is free from any deficiencies, correct? God it is has perfect. To be one entity, but again, yeah. why does that one entity have to be good? Why can that be like a natural force, like a, no, like no, a no, gas no. or a particle? No, or... good, good. Because if that's the case, that means it has a beginning. So if God, if Allah is the creator of everything, then he cannot be brought into existence. It's illogical. That's illogical. Why that can God be in universe that's always existed? Okay. Okay. What well, you you define you you define to me what the universe is? Pardon? Define for me the universe. Everything that there is. Okay. So uh, everything that is that we can observe, right? Well, yes, uh, or things that or things that we can observe. Unobservable universe. Unobser universe. Okay. So can you give me any example? Something in the universe that always existed. Uh, no. Good, because Allah. Not be for observation. Anyway. Good, because Allah says Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. All the praise and thanks be to Allah. The creator, the maintainer, provider of all creation. The Arabic word alamin is a plurality of the alam, a type of world, meaning something that's created. The world of the angels, the world of jinns, the world of humans, right? Yeah. So, universe, alam, universe defined everything that's besides Allah. Everything that's besides Allah is created. That you cannot give, convenient though, for the give me one example. Give me one example. Did this tree always exist? Uh, no, no. Give me any example. Good, good. So therefore, so, de so de good. So therefore, if the universe has a beginning and is brought into existence, then rationally speaking, with your sound intellect, with your natural inclination, there must be the creator 
that always existed. There was nothing before him, there's nothing after him. Simple. Do you understand, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Allah says, Qul Allah ahad. Say he is Allah one. Yeah? So not two and three, not, not two and one like Christians, not Hinduism, multiple but one. One powerful being, yeah? Allah who's samad. Allah, the self-sufficient. He doesn't eat, he doesn't drink. Yeah? Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not have parents, he was not born. There is nothing like him. Now, this definition of Allah, it aligns with your fitrah. Because you know, from a natural inclination, that if God exists, God, can, God, God, God cannot become a, a baby and then get breastfed by his mother. You know this shows deficiency, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is free from deficiency. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is all wise. Free from any weakness. Free from any deficiency. Perfect. Complete. Right? That is called pure monotheism, which is called Tawheed. That we single him out in his lordship. He's the only creator, the maintainer, provider of all creation. He is the one whom we worship alone and his beautiful names and attributes. Yeah. So now we've proven the existence of the creator. Now the question is. Well, I don't, why yeah. isn't the, so earlier you said that nothing can come from nothing, right? No, I didn't say nothing come from nothing. I said nothing cannot come by nothing. Say that again. I said nothing cannot come by nothing. Yeah, so uh, was, yeah, because Allah says, Allah says in Surah An'am, uh, that he is, the, he is the originator of the heavens and the earth. The Arabic word Bid'u means he created from nothing. So Allah, because he's all powerful, he can create from nothing. He just said, be, yeah, because he said, be and it is, be and it is. Allah, uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in chapter 3, verse 59, Allah say inna mathal Isa inna Allah ka mathal Adam khalaquhu min turab thumma qala lahu kun fayakun indeed the likeness of Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam he created from dust and he said be and it is if Allah wants to create something he just says be and it is so he can create from nothing but you know nothing cannot come by nothing so there has to be something that always existed that is has the ability to create has the ability just like for example this phone you know from your natural inclination this phone did not come by nothing this phone didn't come by itself there must be the manufacturer who had the power, the will, the knowledge, the wisdom. What about you? Are you more complex or this one? Because this phone is a machine. If you allow me to call the human beings as machine, we're, we're far more complex than this simple phone, which is also a machine. So if you accept that there must be a manufacturer behind this phone, what about yourself? No, no. Evolution, evolution is a presupposition that uh, that is just a one state of another, one species to another. Evolution doesn't disprove God. In fact, uh, Charles Darwin. Good, but I'm more saying how you ask me how I no. exhibiting properties. Like no, that's not evolution. That's adaptation. Adaptations arise by. But Allah's will. But Allah's will. But Allah's will. Just like, for example, you know, scientists today, they said something like the scientists today, they said that our cells is like computers. Scientists are saying this. Our cells behave like computers. So let's give the analogy of a computer, right? And you know DNA has coding information, correct? Yeah? You know that the information doesn't come by itself. So who, who determined, who measured? First piece of information. Yeah. Well, as I say, I, from a natural perspective. No, not naturally. For me, from, from my perspective. Right? No, 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 no. If you, accept, if you already accept the existence of, uh, of God, Right? There, okay, do you know we as Muslims? I don't we, understand yeah. how you're saying peace can come. Early you told me nothing can come by nothing. Yes, yes. I know you're saying Allah can make peace come by nothing. Because Allah is something. He always existed. No, it's not convenient. Okay, you give, me, you give me another option. So nothing cannot come by nothing. Nothing created itself. We didn't create the universe. Give me another alternative option. Say that again, please. Okay. The noise that yeah, no problem, no problem. There's so it's loads of hecklers. No, no, that's fine, no problem. Nothing cannot come by nothing. Nothing, uh, sorry, uh, we didn't create ourselves. Yeah, we didn't create We ourselves. didn't create the universe. Yeah, we didn't create the Right, universe. so if you don't accept any of this premise, give me a fourth option. It was a natural cause, a natural first cause. Okay, a cause is just an action. A natural first, well... It's just an action. I feel like me and you use, I feel like me and you use the word creation and cause. How does that negate, okay, hang on, hang on. How does that negate the existence of the creator? Because look, 
I lost I'm not yeah. denying that there's existence of a creator, so to speak. Yeah. It's that it's the creator that you're speaking of. So yeah. I feel like you go from the, the idea of a creator and you kind of extrapolate these properties onto him. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that even from a naturalistic perspective, yeah. you cannot explain to me how did the first cell exist? Uh, how? But again, no, I'm happy to say that no. No, no, no. Like, look, look, listen, listen. You're a naturalist, you only go by empirical. No, no, no. Empir okay, do you accept everything in, in, empirical? What do you mean by is everything empirical? Okay, Science, scientific method by definition means a collection of data yeah. that, is, that is repeated, observed and tested, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, do you accept the Big Bang? I, I, to be honest, I've done much research on the Big Bang, so... No, do, do you believe it or yes or no? Well, I, I understand there's a scientific consensus on the Big okay, Bang. Okay, brilliant. So, so there's some... Right. Again, Good. I haven't read the scientific no problem. But, but no yeah. problem. No problem. There's something called hard science and soft science. Yeah, speculative science. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hard science meaning we can physically create things. Like for example, you create like engineering. You can create computers. You yeah, can yeah. create planes. We've got no problem with that. The speculative science means you're speculated something that you were not even there millions of years ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for so for example, the Big Bang. Allah subhanahu wa taala. Look how powerful this argument from the Quran is. Allah says in in, in chapter 18, verse 51. I, Allah, I did not make you witness the creation of the heavens and the earth, nor did I make you witness the creation of yourself. Look at this. These atheist scientists are now, are now speculating things that happened millions of years ago. They weren't even there, right? Atheists, by atheists deep down, they know there's the creator. Why did they reject? Because of their ego and their arrogance. Atheists deep down, they know there's the creator, but because they don't want to accept the creator because of their arrogance because they know they have a master they have someone to obey every every atheist and you know what even from your instinctive atheism yeah. is in a belief system though it's a simple it's just a uh, wait wait hang on hang on did you say atheism is a belief system atheism is not a belief system it's not a belief system atheism is not a belief system so being okay. an atheist comes right. with one thing and one thing only right right and that's just negating no the, atheism is a belief system no, it's not. because you're making up negation of belief no no Okay. Being an atheist, you're not naturally walking into other... No, 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 no. Agnostic, you could say that. Atheists cannot say that because atheists are making positive assertion there is no God. Agnostics say, I'm not sure. Atheists say that there is no God. Yeah, that... a negative claim though. No, no. Claim, it's, a posit no it's a positive assertion. It's a positive assertion. If I say there is no car and there is car, both of you are making claim. Yeah? And uh, an agnostic would say, I don't know. Then fair enough. You don't know. But by saying there is no good, that, that doesn't that's, necessarily entail any of a belief. That's the reason why, that's the reason why atheism is an unnatural state. Nobody truly believes that there is no God. They, they may be skeptic, agnostic at best. Nobody cannot be an atheist. Because, you know, there was a study that was done by Professor Justin Barrett from Oxford University. Uh, he collated uh, many kids from different parts of the world, different cultures, different, different backgrounds, right? And th th they've come to conclusion that by the time the kids reach the age of four, they all accept that there's the creator, a high power. This is something that is innate. But, and this is very consistent with what, what, what the prophet said. How did they experiment? Like, how did they accept the data? Did, it was, do you know how much they spent? They meant trillions of pounds into this project. It was massive. Uh, you could trillions check. Trillions of pounds into this? Yes, yes. Project. Professor Justin Barrett. You could check. Okay, well, because you know what he said. Yeah, yeah. He, say, he says, and you could check on his YouTube. He's got an interview, right? And I listen, he said that uh, when we conducted this study, yeah. the children, they analyze the, the creation. They analyze the giraffes, they analyze uh, mountains and trees. They say that, look, if we, if, if we didn't build trees and if we didn't build plants and if we didn't build ourselves, then who built those? Who created those? So by the time they reach the age of four, you know, all kids, they say, there must be a, a creator, a higher power. And this is and and what the Prophet Muhammad said is very very consistent. He said this 1400 years ago. He said every child is born as a, as a, in din of fitr, meaning innate way of life. That meaning that you submit to the Creator, exactly. But his parents make him a Jew or Christian or fire worshiper. So human beings are product of the environment. If you leave the children uh, without any external influence, the children will believe there's a Creator. But because the parents teach them Christianity, Judaism, atheism, they become an atheist. So now the question is, you have no reason why there's no creator. You have to accept there's the creator. Now the creator, did he communicate us? Would the creator leave us alone? No, he would not. One of the problems I have with the idea of there being this divine creator who's you know, all powerful and all sure. knowing is, is the problem of evil. How does Islam tackle the problem of evil? The problem of evil, okay. So 
when you use the argument problem of evil, right? It's not a problem for us, by the way, but uh, uh, right, you, you say problem of evil. Uh, right. That, this argument is with the presupposition that you already accept there is, there is the creator. Otherwise, you don't, that otherwise uh, we can't entertain this question. By saying no, it's by saying if it, by saying if there is an all knowing being, an all loving being. So yeah. By saying there is a yeah. being who is all loving, yeah. all knowing, all powerful, and we can observe that there's evil on the planet, that like humans can be evil, okay. or natural evil. Even. Good. Okay. So, so how? how can those right, right. So, even for the sake of argument, let's say for you, there's a problem of evil. How does that negate the existence of the Creator? Because the existence of evil seems logically inconsistent with that. No. Idea. What if the Creator gave us a reason why there's good and evil? That's what I'm asking. That's what that's no. Right. Because this life is a test. We've been tested, and it would determine for us whether we go to paradise or hell. Well, if, he, if he knows everything, why is he tested? No, no, no. Allah, from his legislative will, right? Because we believe in Qadr, like uh, predestination, yeah? That Allah has measured everything, determined everything, knowledge, uh, will, creation, and he written down. But how, things are predetermined. Yeah, yeah things are predetermined. However, so how can you test I, I'll, answer, I'll answer that. Because Allah, from his legislative will, he commanded us to do good. But Allah, from his universal will, he allowed for us to make the choice to make good or, good or bad because this life is a test for us. Do you understand? So do you accept there's the creator? First of all, before we move on, do you accept there's the creator? Because, look, because this... No, 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 no. Because the problem of evil doesn't necessarily mean that there's no creator. It's still possibly there's the creator. So are you... So are you... Are you yeah. Yeah, no, go, go, go ahead. Yeah. 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 What's the word when you can have a, you can either be right or wrong morally? Moral responsibility, sir. Moral responsibility. We don't assign moral responsibility to anyone. Okay. Without we think moral responsibility. Can, 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 I, can I just address something? Sorry. Can I address something? Okay, now, now you're no longer an atheist. You're a misotheist. You're a misotheist. I mean, you're misotheist. You know what that means? That means you have a hatred of God. That's what you're doing. So, so, now, so, so, so what I'm trying to say is this question of problem evil, which for us is not problem evil because Allah already gave us the answer. This life is a test. Allah says in Surah Al-Mulk, Surah 67, Ayah 2, that it is he who created death and life to test which of us are good indeed. So this life is a test for the hereafter. So based upon our deeds, based upon our faith, that will determine for us whether we go to paradise or hell. So for us as Muslims, we have no problem. But you as an atheist, which deep down you're not an atheist, at best you're a misotheist. So let me ask you this question. Let's say for example, you have a child. Yeah. Watch this. Let's say for example, you have a child. He's in his, he's five, six years old. Terminal cancer. Terminal cancer. You're giving him palliative care. You know what palliative care means? Like you're giving like, as an atheist, what, how would you give him hope? Yeah. Yeah. What, what advice would you give him? Okay. Do you know what we say? We say, look, Allah, Allah is testing you. Allah loves you. But, right, right. But you as an atheist, you say, oh no, naturally it just happened. But the child will say, but why do I deserve it? So we have the answer. No, 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 no. You missed the point. No, no, no. As an, as an atheist, you believe that everything came from blind matter, from randomness, right? So you can. No, no, no. I'm so, no but, so you can only say, oh, oh, cancer just happened because of uh, uh, reproduction of cells. It, it, it keeps replicating cells, right? That's all you can. That's that's the only explanation you can give as a naturalist. You're not giving any hope. Just because the result of something isn't very nice doesn't feel nice enough, doesn't mean it's not so No, 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 I'm asking you, uh, the child. Yeah. Okay, sure, sure, no problem, no problem. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not, we're not going to record you, don't worry. Just show my face, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, the camera is facing me, don't worry. Okay. You see, you see, look, look, the problem of evil is more on you, it's not for us. Because Allah has already given us the answer, this life is a test. 
So Allah has created good and evil as a test for us. Yeah. So this life is a test for the hereafter, right? And Allah has given us the will, has given us the choice. Fujurahu wa taqwaha. You chose the wicked path or the, or the right path is up to you. As an atheist, if you have a child who's got terminal cancer, what's the best, what, what's the best treatment you can give to, to that child? What's the best treatment you can give to an, to an atheist, uh, to, to a child who's, who's got terminal cancer? Palliative care. That wouldn't help him. Imagine you as a naturalist say, oh, you, got, you're terminally, uh, you, got, you're, uh, you have terminal cancer because of replication of uh, cells. The child will be like, yeah, but why do I deserve it? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, us as Muslims, no problem. So Allah said this life is a test. So the problem is more on you, not us. So again, you accept as the creator. So now what we say as Muslims, I'll only, I'll only take a two minutes of your time or three minutes. Thank you for taking your time. This is the basic message of Islam, yeah? The core message of Islam is that there is nothing worth it to be worshipped in truth except Allah, who is the only creator, the provider, maintainer of all creation, who has no partners, right? He is one, he is self-sufficient, he doesn't have parents, he doesn't have children, there is nothing like him. So worship Allah alone and do not associate any partners with him. And, and uh, Allah has created us and he will not leave us misguided. Rather, he created us for a purpose. And the purpose of our creation is to worship him alone. Islam is the religion which Allah has ordained upon all mankind. It is the religion of all the prophets and messengers, including Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, peace be upon all of them. Their religion is Al-Islam, which Islam means submission. They all submitted to the will of the one true creator, right? And not to associate partners with him. And every messenger uh, was given divine books that were suitable for their people for their time. Allah decreed Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be his final prophet. So therefore he was given the final revelation which is suitable for all people in all times. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be, him, peace be upon him, came to us with proofs and guidance that he is the messenger of Allah. So therefore we believe in him and follow him. So whoever obeys the Prophet will enter paradise. Whoever disobeys the Prophet will enter hellfire. So Islam is based on two things. The Quran, which is the speech of Allah, and the Sunnah, which are the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Does that make sense? And does God be knowing now he's going to end up going to... Uh, yeah, of course. He, yes, of course. It's determined. So now... Great people knowing whether they're going to... Evil yeah, but, but the thing is, at the, no, no, at the end of the day, this, look, uh, that, that's a very good point. The scholars have mentioned this is among the secrets of Allah. It's among the secrets of Allah, right? So we cannot give, it's, it's among the secrets of God, secrets okay, of Allah. No, yeah? Appealing to secrets when it's convenient for you, doesn't Okay, right okay, wait, wait, wait. But we don't know how God is all knowing. But why can we postulate, why, 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 why is this creation a sign of all knowing? Because you know. You told me that, right? I haven't said that. No, he's not atheist. He believes in God. He believes in God. He knows. So it's like the brain determines your actions by the same time. Uh, to reduce me, I what what? to reduce my ego as far as it would go. Again, again, are you a nihilist? Am I a nihilist? Yeah. Do you think humans can create their own meaning and prescribe values? No, 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 that's purpose. I'm not asking about purpose. I'm saying, are you a nihilist? Do you know what nihilist is? Absence of value. Absence of value. But yet, you, are, you, are you a nihilist? Do you mean like, it depends on like an innate fundamental value? I don't know. Uh, you, 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 don't, you don't believe in good and evil? By, by my own standard, sure. But I don't, I don't think wait, uh, wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Sorry, sorry, one second. One second. Don't, don't listen to him. I know him. Look, look, are you a nihilist? Meaning that there's no value? No good and evil? Depends, depends on what you mean by that. Is it a fundamental value? Like the value no, free. morality. Morality. Do you accept that there is good and evil? Good and evil? Yeah. Well, I stand that's like precedes us now. No, no, no. I, I answer the question directly, with all due respect. No, 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 but, no, but that's, you can't do that because the terms are really important. The way we define good and evil could be... No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not defined by good and evil. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? The way you, yeah. when you ask me, do I believe in good and evil, you're naturally presupposing a concept. No, I'm saying... No, no, no. I'm, if I get answer the question, and I'm applied concept of good and evil... No, I'm, no, 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 no. We're not talking about definition. I'm just saying on face value, as an axiom, do you believe there is good and evil? I believe there are things that are, can be good and there are things that can be bad. So. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Now you as an atheist, you cannot give the answer why there's good and evil. All you can say is, we came from blind matter. Well, I can't, I can there's natural that. causes. But the question is, why is this person rich and why am I poor? Because, because why is this person... Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. You can find those good and bad as atheists. Wait, hang on, hang on. Ah, uh, you... Ah, uh, okay. So therefore, we need objective morality from who? The Creator. Because Allah says, no, no, look, look, it's very, look, look, very rational. Allah says, Allah, Allah is, Allah knows his own creation. Yeah, Allah knows his own creation. Just like, for example, this phone, 
if this phone is destroyed, who can recreate the phone? The creator. It's very easy. So Allah knows what's good and bad for us. You as an atheist, you've got no moral standards. So, so, someone, so, so someone may say, okay, do you believe, all right, do you believe that uh, killing an innocent child, killing a baby is wrong? Yeah. Why? So more, what, more, what more standards are you are you measuring against that? By killing a baby, measuring against No, why? Why, why is that wrong? Because that would destroy that the entity. Has no. Let's say, for example, you're an evolutionist. Darwin, uh, Darwin evolutionist. Well, if you, if you ask, you ask, I mean, a natural explanation. No, no, they'll give a natural explanation. Why this child is useless for us? This child has got terminal cancer. I, I can't pass the next gene to my next generation. If, if then what? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Do you see the problem? Do you see the problem? No, but it's about living in a practical society. So morality, if you're a typical atheist, morality yeah. is more of a practical thing. It's not something that exists yeah. in the way you think it is. As, like, it doesn't precede us. You know, Allah says that. You know what's very interesting? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's a bit of mind independent. You know, do you know what's very interesting? You know, Allah gives a powerful argument, yeah? Powerful argument. Allah says, had we followed the desires of the people, there will be chaos in the heavens and the earth. Look at this. Allah, look, 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 listen to this. Allah says, had we followed the desires of the people, there will be chaos in the heavens and the earth. Now, what's the problem now? Every, now everyone thinks they've, if I'm a female, then I'm a female. If I'm a monkey, I'm a monkey. If I'm a piano, I'm a piano. You know, this is illogical. This is what happens. The result of not believing the creator, you've got no moral standards. You're uncertain. That's the reason why when you know for certain there's the creator, you want everything that precedes is certainty. That's the reason why God, that's the reason why uh, killing innocent people, like innocent child is wrong. Why? Because it's giving you innate knowledge. But same individuals who are atheists and okay. live their whole life as an atheist and live very, as by your, even, even by your standards, live very good lives, live very moral lives. What do you think of Well, them? define morality for me because everyone, everyone believes they're morally right. That's what I said. No, no, no. You as an atheist, you have to define. My morality comes from the revelation, from the Quran, and from the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You have no moral anchor. That's the reason why, you know, this is called, I studied psychology up until A levels, right? Even the basics, yeah? There's called uh, classical conditioning. You know, you can condition a child to do something wrong. You can do that. Because it's corrupted. Because everyone's born, they know that this is intrinsically wrong. Killing an innocent child is wrong. But the society, if you lived in the Nazi regime, in Hitler's time, the, the children are brought up to say, you know, we can kill innocent Jews, no problem. Because they've been conditioned. That's the reason why the absence of the creator, what's happening now? This society is so, is so people are confused now. Chaos. Yeah, Chaos, okay? So now we've established as the creator. And the creator, but you yeah. Saying, just saying, that, saying, need, saying just because we need objective morality, no, no, I'm saying, no, no, the thing is, no, 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 do you see, do you see, all right, that was my first premise, what was my first premise to you? No, the first premise is to prove to the existence of God. Oh, okay. Yeah, my first premise wasn't about morality, that comes afterwards, that's after you accept, because of course, you have questions, why is the good, why is the evil, of course, that's the reason why you need revelation to tell you why you're going through good and evil. And Allah gives you the answer, you're being tested. Yeah, just because, because revelation and theism or Islam is correct. Okay, so if I give you proofs that Islam is true, would you at least be open minded? Oh, it's true. Like if you gave me proof that Islam is true. Yeah. So first you accept as the creator. No, no, no. Do you accept as the creator now? Again, how are you characterizing creator again? Creator of everything. Yeah, creator of everything. The one who always existed, the one who's all powerful, all knowing. He's one. He's self sufficient. He doesn't have parents. He's not born. He has no beginning, no end. There's nothing like him. Yeah, he's not a monkey. He's not a human. He's not a tree. He's not a star. I'm always very cautious to accept a premise I can't have done. So, which one would make sense to you? Pardon? Which one makes sense to you? Which one actually aligns with your, with your rationality? Would you? Why? Okay. When it comes to the creation of the, the yeah. universe. Right can now, you the can, most the rational answer is to accept can you consciousness. see consciousness? Pardon? Can you see consciousness? Yeah. How do you define consciousness? Awareness. 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 Can I see it? 
No, you can't see. see. This is the problem. I think you're in because you say you're a naturalist. Okay, I, I, I've studied the basis of philosophy, right? Uh, usually, I don't introduce philosophy, but this is where it's important. Yeah. No, no, no. When I when I say philosophy, I meant the the extreme way as a disciplinary subject. When I say what we're using is sound reasoning. Yeah, not philosophy. Philosophy is a, is a is a separate discipline, right? Because because no, no, because philosophy consists of metaphysics, epistemology, uh, what's the other one? Uh, existentialism and idealism. I'm not posting any of that. So this is philosophy. I, 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 no, wait, I'm talking about I'm talking about sound reasoning. Yeah, not philosophy, right? But because I, because you're using naturalist explanation, um, in philosophy of science, there's there's two different branches, right? You have uh, scientific realism, scientific instrumentalism. Have you ever heard them before? No, no, no. This is no, no, no. Let, let's break it down. Let's break it down. So, what is scientific realism? No, that, that, that that's the other way around. That's, that's scientific instrumentalism. Scientific realism means uh, science is your objective reality. Things that you can only observe. That's your reality. That's that's no. No, scientism is a dogmatic belief. But I'm being very, no, I'm being very specific because there's, because not all not all not all of those who call scientism have the same belief. Just like right, for example, someone who's a, a liberalist, right? Liberalism, right? Under the under that umbrella, there's so many different liberals. You have neoliberals, you have traditional liberals. Not all liberals are traditional liberals, and not all neoliberalists are traditional liberals. Do you get it? So similarly, when you say but they subscribe to scientism, that doesn't mean they agree with everything. That's the reason why there's a, there's a school of thought. Yeah. There's one scientific realism and scientific instrumentalism. Scientific realism meaning you're using science as your objective reality, so things that you can only observe, right? Scientific instrumentalism means you're utilizing science as making predictions and theories of the unobservable, but you're agnostic about it. So which one do you belong? You're a naturalist, so you should be able to answer. Asking me, am I a scientific realist or scientific But you're a naturalist. You said you're a naturalist. So uh, this is. I lean towards it. I said I lean towards it. In this in, which one? Realism or instrumentalism? Instrumentalism. Then thank you. Then therefore you cannot use the. You cannot then use the example. Oh, I didn't see God. Then you can't use that. <laughs> That's it. Simple. So, so no, simple. Look, look, look. I've. I've never seen the manufacturer behind this phone. But why do you know there's the manufacturer? Because you can. No, no, no. Why? Because you know about the patient that you can manufacture. No, let's say. For, oh, good. Let's say. That's like me saying, that's like me saying, how do I have a great, great, great grandmother? Right. Good. I know by observation that other human beings let, no, good, good, good. are produced by a man and a woman. Let's say, for example. And therefore, biological forces backwards, I know that I'd have a great, great, no, great grandmother. No, no, no. Let's say, for example, you're cut from civilization, human civilization. And then you see a building in the middle of the desert. What would be your instant reaction? Let's say, for example, you're in a desert, in the Sahara Desert, yeah, and all of a sudden, yeah, 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 it could be any time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's say you're in the Sahara Desert, and then you see a building in the middle, nicely. There's lofty palace. There's ri rivers flowing, right? Are you gonna say? Are you gonna say there's no creator? There's no manufacturer? Huh? But you've never seen a. But, no, 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 no. No, no. Do you, do you remember? Do you, sorry, what's your name again? Sorry, Sunny. Right hand. Sorry, sorry. Sunny. Do you remember I gave you the study by Justin Barrett? Yeah. That's what it's proven. It's proven that it's an innate knowledge, an innate disposition of every child to believe that there's the Creator. They know that. Even you, you said no. I, I would know that the, 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 there there must be a builder behind this building in the middle of the desert. Okay, but no, 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 no. You're by yourself. No external influence. You're by yourself in the middle of the desert. So I've never the, the, ever the, seen a building prior to that building. No, you've never. No, you've never come across. You've never come across a civilization. You've never seen a human. You never, you've never seen anything. Then what? And I had a question to look over. I wouldn't would necessarily know that people have created. You've never seen. You do know. You do know there are there are certain there are certain people who are cut off from human civilization, yeah. right? Yeah. And they can use their natural instinct. They can use rationality. They didn't make any power observation, right? And you even accepted that you're a scientific instrumentalist. That means you you accept you accept you you, you no. That means you you accept unobservable things. That's it. So your question, I haven't seen God, therefore I don't believe, is illogical. It's, it's self-contradiction. The fact that 
the fact that you're not a scientific realist, that you don't restrict your belief based upon observable entities, you're open to unobs unobservable stuff. Because you said you're instrumentalist. Sorry, sorry. I, I explained very clearly what, what the difference between scientific realism and scientific instrumentalism. Scientific realism meaning your objective reality is things that you can observe. No, but I, no, but scientific realism is about the nature of science itself. Now, I've already explained to you. So, so, you, you see, when you say scientism... When I say I'm yeah. a scientific instrumentalist, I'm not saying about... I would mean that if, if I were to say I was a scientific instrumentalist, yeah. I'd be saying that the nature of science... So at best you should be agnostic. I said at the start of this no, no, no. But that's the, but the thing is, you don't restrict rea reality to empiricism, right? I didn't, I didn't you don't. You don't restrict reality to empiricism. I restrict knowledge. Knowledge is part of empiricism, not experience, senses, hearing, sight, seeing. Yeah, that's empiricism. That's the basis of knowledge. Yeah. So who gave you that empiricism? That's the reason why. why? No, that's the reason why. Before science, you 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 see the problem is this. You have many many axioms presuppositions that based upon rationality. Where did rationality come from before science? Where where did rationality come? Come from? Yeah, where did, because you, you are defining science in a particular way. When you say rationality, you mean that things are logic? Things that, things that you've defined what scientific method is, what science is. So that's the reason why seeing, seeing is believing, is ludicrous. Because there are things that you, there are things that you haven't seen that you believe. It's consciousness. Organ. Okay, awareness of your. Are you aware of your? Are you aware of your own existence? Am I aware of my own? Yeah. Who gave you that innate knowledge? Pardon? Who gave you that innate knowledge? Did your parents taught you that you exist? My own experience tells me I exist. But who gave? Who gave the ability to have the experience? Okay. Who gave me the ability? Yeah. To have yeah. That did, yeah. Did your parents teach you that? Oh, you exist. No. This is something that's innate. You know that you exist. You're not taught by your parents. Nature versus nurture. You see, naturally, you know. Like you don't need to be taught by your parents that you exist. Is that okay? You know, you know, you know deep down. You don't need to be taught by your parents that you exist because you know it's something that is innate. What's your large point? Huh? My large point is this: you cannot restrict reality to things that's only observable, because you even conceded that you accept things that's also unobservable, like consciousness, like mind. I didn't say consciousness. Consci okay, can you test? Can you observe? We have things like split brain phenomena. The mom you said intellect, that's that, that's well, not in science. Answer, by using the term consciousness, it's really important to define it. That's why it's called a hard problem of consciousness in science. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, that's, heard yeah good. So, but you accept consciousness. So that means your whole thing about I need to see to believe is out of the window. But the hard problem of consciousness is not the problem of defining consciousness. But so, it would not be a hard, wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. It would not be a hard problem if they, if they, if, if it would not be a hard problem if they didn't know what consciousness is. The fact that they know well, what consciousness is, it's a hard you problem. Have, you have many scholars who have provided framework. I, I don't care about them. I'm, 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 I but care about would, you. They would say they do know consciousness. And they would say by their. By what, okay, what is consciousness? You, you define for me what is consciousness. Again, you ask me these questions like I, I should. Have First of all, do you believe consciousness exists? Yes or no? I believe things are sentient and I believe things have feelings and they have experience. Yeah, so that's that's consciousness. I believe things process and experience. Yeah, that's, and yeah, that's consciousness. That, in other words, that's consciousness, awareness. Yes. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So things, are, things are definitely aware. Yeah, no problem. So you accept this consciousness. Okay. So now there is the creator. And it, 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 you see, the creator, he left his signs. Look at the heavens and the earth. Look at the creation of your own self. So he left signs. Just like, for example, you see a signpost. Uh, you see, you see a lamp post, right? It's a sign. It's a direction. Just like, for example, when you are traversing in the desert, when you see footprints, you know that there must be a a, a camel passing by or a human, sure. something, right? You're not going to say this come by nothing. You just pop out of nothing. So similarly, the Creator has left his signs of his creation, right? So this is something so that's in Yes, of course, because who 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 taught you awareness? Even the even the babies. Uh, yeah, awareness is inborn. Yeah. Who it, 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 yeah, can be affected who, by? When you when you were born, yeah. when you were born, when your mother breastfed you, yeah. who taught you to know where your where where, yeah, where is? So who gave you that inborn? Natural inclination. That's the point. That's what Islam is. Natural inclination. Allah has given you natural. Uh, he instilled natural things. That's the reason why you can identify what's good and bad if you are not affected by the society. That's the reason why when a person accepts Islam, you come back to your natural inclination, not convert, revert, when you're coming back to your original state, right? So now, what are the proofs that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God?
First of all, the Quran. The Quran, which we say is the speech of Allah, right? And it is a living miracle. Why is it a living miracle? Because the Quran claims that this book is from Allah and it cannot, it, it cannot produce a book like it. Now, you may not understand the Arabic language. That's absolutely fine. But look at the primary reaction of the Arabs. Because the, the Arabs, they were, very, uh, they were very proficient in the Arabic language. They're very proud of the Arabic language. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed the Quran, his speech, he's saying that, look, you don't believe this is from me? Try and, rep try and produce something like it. This is a challenge from the Quran it's in chapter 2, verse 23. If you are in doubt as to what we have revealed to our servant, Prophet peace be upon him, then produce a chapter like it and call your witnesses, call your all helpers besides Allah if you're speaking the truth. Now, look at this. Allah then gives assurance. If you cannot, walan taf'alu, you will never be able to do it. Does that sound like you, a human being, can make such a claim? You must be foolish to say that no one can meet a challenge. But because this is from the Creator, no one can meet the challenge to, to, uh, to uh, produce a chapter like it. This was the challenge to the Arabs. The primary orders, what was their reaction? We have testimonies from Al-Walid ibn Mughira, one of the top poets. We had Utbah bin Rabi'ah. All of these Arab poets, they conceded, this is not a regular speech of any human being. This is not a, this is not a speech of a poet. It's not a speech of a, of, of a soothsayer. This is not the speech of Muhammad. By the way, Muhammad, he was an Ummi. He was unlettered. He, can, he was not a poet. They knew he's not a poet because they, they know him. For 40 years, for 40 years, they knew he was not a poet. So look at the primary, and look at this, look at the Arabs. Because they felt so threatened by the message of Islam, because Islam was growing, a lot of people accepted Islam, they had to resort to fighting. Why didn't they choose to meet the challenge rather than losing their own lives? Because they know they cannot meet the challenge. Even till now, even the Arab Christians, even the Arab linguists, like Hamilton Gibbs, like um, Professor Raymond Farin, by the way, he accepted Islam, Professor Raymond Farin, because of this challenge, right? They said that the Quran is the best Arabic literature. No one has met the challenge. This is from academics, Angelica New have said. It's embarrassing that the Western historians cannot even, uh, cannot even meet the challenge of the Quran. So this is the number one proof. Quran is a living miracle. Number two is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, in chapter 4 verse 8 to Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبُّرُ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِ غَيْرِ لَوْجِدْ فِي إِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا Do they not consider the Quran with care? Had you from anyone besides Allah, they will find there are many contradictions. All you need to do, Sunny, is read the Quran and find a single contradiction. What do I mean contradiction? Meaning it cannot exist at the same time. For example, in the Bible, they are full of contradictions. Because you know God, if God is the author of this book, he, He's perfect, He cannot make mistakes, He cannot contradict. But Allah is... The Quran, okay, infallible, like the speech of Allah, yes, infallible. No mistakes, because this is from the speech from Allah. Allah is perfect. All of His attributes, His speech, His knowledge is perfect without any deficiency. So Allah is telling you, you don't believe this is from me, find a single contradiction. And what's amazing is the Quran was not revealed in one book. The Quran was revealed piecemeal over a, over a 23 year period based on circumstances, not a single contradiction. So all you need to do, Sunny, open the Quran, find a single contradiction. That's another proof. Number three, the prophecies. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave many prophecies. And I'll give you one or two. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, a time will come, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is when barefooted, destitute shepherds will, con will compete each other in constructing two buildings. Now, he's referring to the Bedouin Arabs. There's two different types of Arabs. You have the city Arabs and the Bedouin Arabs. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a city Arab. What does city Arab mean? Mean that he, he lived in a public environment. They had some sort of st stories, right? He's talking about the Bedouin Arabs. Be do you know who the Bedouin Arabs are? The Bedouin Arabs. Do you know who they are? Bedouin Arabs are like uh, desert dwellers. Yeah, their, their life is just camel. No civilization, no building. They're poor, destitute, poor. Where is the tallest building? Where is the tallest building now? Bush Khalifa. Now, do you know if you if you watch the documentary the Abu Dhabi 1968 documentary, you'd be shocked. Only in the 60s they were poor, destitute. And by the way, the scholars Imam Nawawi, he was he was in the 13th century. They even said, even though we believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this prophecy that the, the Bedouins would compete, it's it's unthinkable. But because he's a prophet of Allah, we we have to believe. 
Now you've seen this right now. I can even show you a photo. Um, and then I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Thank you for taking your time. Yeah. yeah. So let me give you a photo. Let me, let me uh, show you a photo. Right? Dubai. Uh, now. Sorry, then and now and then. By the way, Bedouin Arabs, only, only in one generation, they became from shepherds, poor, to becoming the riches, the kings, the priests, prince. Look at this. This is 1997, uh, 1991. So how did, the, look, let alone 30 years ago, how did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how did you know this 49 years ago? Unless he received this revelation from the all-knowing, from Almighty God. Another prophecy, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is, when women will come, their belly will be torn into two and whatever is in their womb will be taken out of the fear of being born. What's he talking about? Abortion. Do you know, if you want to do abortion, you need medical tools and surgery. If you, if you try to dissect the woman's belly, 49 years ago, she's going to die. The prophet said this will happen. Women will come. They want to abort. They don't want to have children. How do the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon how do you know this more than 1,500 years? I'm very educated on the Quran, so I don't know how many prophecies have been. Read the Quran. Read the Quran. I don't know how many. So just because the number of prophecies have to come true, yeah, doesn't necessarily. Matter. Very good. I like that. I like that. I love. I love that challenge. This is the reason why the scholars said miracles is not good enough, because even false prophets can do miracles. Now I will give you the proof that ends everything that you have. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu character. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, his character. The character. His character. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he was known to be a Sadiq al Amin, the trustworthy, the honest. By the way, he, he is the most influential human figure in history, according to Mark yeah. chart in the book, right? He is the most well documented. Even, even the narrations even, even tells us how he did bath. You will not find this intricate detail of the Prime Minister, of this. Look at the enemies of the Prophet. They knew him for 40 years. They knew that he's not a liar. He was speaking the truth. That for me is sufficient. You see, his character is sufficient for me to accept he's a messenger of God. But because there are people who are skeptic, like many people, Allah gives him proofs and miracles to prove he's a prophet of God. To be a, a now, now he has no excuse. Did you want a free Quran? A what? A free Quran. Yeah, I'll end you the want? discussion here. I'll end the discussion here. Do you, do you have a copy of the Quran? Yeah. We we'll have a copy of the Quran. Thank but you. thank you for taking your time. Look, thank if I offended you, you well. yeah, thank you. If I, if I offended you, I apologize. It's not oh, my no, fantastic no, sonny. Nice to meet you. Kind of but look, me. have you read the Quran? Now it's, now it's worth to read the Quran, right? What's going to happen with the footage? Oh, no, no. It's just me. Look, all the cameras up. What, what happens no editing. Anyway? No editing. No editing. It's just towards me. So I'm not on it? Yeah? No, no, you're not on it. No, no, no. Call me. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah. Just stay here. He'll, he'll, he'll give you the copy of the Quran. So, you know, so after the proofs that I've given you, it's worth to read the Quran now, right? Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Wa alaikum as salam. Asian brother, good. Alhamdulillah. Keep your good. Alhamdulillah, good. Yeah, just in the middle. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I uh, hope you have the best of health with Iman. I mean, uh, it was a long discussion, but alhamdulillah, we have a, uh, we have a, a gentleman called Sunny, very nice individual. We had a respectful discussion. Um, even though there was a lot of, um, a lot of uh, drawbacks and everything, but eventually, um, we got to the point, alhamdulillah, so may Allah guide you. So Sunny, here's our gift for Quran. No, no, thank you. Take care of yourself, Sunny. Thank have you. a good day. Take care. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum.